Hi, I'm Helen Fetter, editor of Yachting World, and welcome back to our look at the second generation AC75s ahead of this summer's America's Cup in Barcelona. I'm really pleased we're once again joined by naval architect and yacht designer Thomas Tisson, who's going to share some of his expertise when it comes to this AC75 rule. And today we're going to take a look at American Magic's new Patriot. Now, I spoke to American Magic helmsman Paul Goodison just before they launched Patriot, and he did hint that they'd done something a bit different this time. Now we've seen the boat on the water sailing for a few weeks, it certainly seems that the American team have made some slightly different choices compared to some of the other challengers. So when this second iteration of the rule came out, I think we all expected the boats to become more similar. What's the advantage, Thomas, in going in a different direction? Because I think if you take a standard design as a, as a starting point and then optimize incrementally, we all have the same tools. And so you would arrive at a different design on a line, and some of them would behave better in certain conditions than others. But there's a certain line called the Pareto front where you cannot go behind, beyond. And so the only way to go beyond that is to use creativity. And that's what we have seen in the past with the wing kill, with Luna Rosa, which had no backstays. And many, many times in the past is that creativity allows to go beyond that front because you're using something new. And to create this, you need to stop thinking about pushing levers you have to create what we call a non-linearity, which is either removing an aspect of the design. So let's say you remove the backstays. You need to add one that was not planned, say the wings. So you create something totally different than the others. Or you need to create a combination of aspects. And so you say, what if we modify this, this, this? And in this particular situation, this combination will make us lose you know, some performance here, but it doesn't matter. But the combination of the three aspects would create something so much better than then we have a chance of winning, which is superior than if we had just pushed the levers. And, and I think that's why in the America's Cup particularly, that's what we are looking for when we look at the designs. Is there something that is outside of, of the ordinary? This is something you see very often when you look at, at boats racing you will always find these sort of curves like this and the boats are, are moving forward and basically they, they have all equal chances of winning. All the boats that are on these lines, we see the weather will distribute who is winning and the boats behind have failed either because the, the sailors are, you know, of lower performance or they have, you know, the design is, is lower, but basically all the optimum designs will be along this curve. And what we are looking is to go beyond, is to, is to create something that's outside of the ordinary. And to do that, you can't just, you know, say, okay, we will increase the sail area by a few percent. You need to do something that the others will not think about, something that's not even a level that the others are thinking of. And, and I think it's in the America's Cup, it's difficult to generate because the rule is so, so narrow. And American Magic, when you look at it in details, they are also doing a bet. They are saying, well, okay, we're losing energy to trim the sails, but we are lowering the center of effort of the sails and having a much more aerodynamic boat. And so in certain conditions, they will be much faster than the others. So in American Magic's gamble in looking for performance in a different area of that performance curve compared to uh, some of the other challenges, what have they done that makes them outliers a little bit in, when it comes to, to their second generation 75? I think they have done two things. One is to go to recumbent bicycle cyclers to create energy. And the other, which is linked to this, is to create a hull shape which has low freeboard so they could gain sail area close to the water. And so that, I mean, she does look, she looks very sleek. She looks much, has much less presence, I think, maybe than some of the other boats. We've talked about, for example, how Ineos looks quite muscular, purposeful. Obviously, Luna Rossa have gone for a different approach, but this Patriot, she's got really organic lines, hasn't she? She doesn't look like a F1 influenced hull shape. And she also looks much, much lower volume. There just seems to be much less of her. Is that... 
a fair assessment? Yeah, I think it's fair. And, and when you look at who is behind in the design team, there's former naval architects from FAR. And I think there's there's an aspect of this boat where it's not a computer that has refined every area. It's really an architect who has played with the main parameters of the architecture that we know impact performance, not on the details, but on the equilibrium. And that's one aspect. And the other aspect is really on, on the shapes that are very fair, very smooth. You can imagine more the hand of, of someone, okay, on the computer, but not optimized locally as in EOS, for instance. So within the rule, presumably all boats have certain set parameters and there is a minimum volume, isn't there? So yeah. presumably they will have worked to get as close to that as they feel is optimum. And then what, in terms of where they distribute that volume and, and what's going on with the deck and the cyclor positions, what have they done that's unique? I think what's unique really is the way they have really pushed the volume of the hull sideways as opposed to vertically. And you can see recently all the teams have tried with other mainsails of smaller area. And, and I think that's, that's an aspect that all the teams will be playing with and optimizing. But the architecture of the boat itself on American Magic is optimized for that. And then from that aft view of the deck as well, we can see the cyclos to a non say to a non America's Cup audience, cyclos look a little bit crazy at the best of times, but mm. sitting down facing backwards is it's gonna be quite quite crazy to look at for if you're coming into the sport fresh. What's going on there with that arrangement they've got? It's because again, that's quite different to the other boats, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think all the other teams have gone to a standard cycler position which generates more energy for a given weight so let's say you have the weight of the crew and the only function of this crew is to generate what and when you are in this position recumbent position you generate less energy so you cannot trim the sail as much as the other teams but then you can have this much fairer much more aerodynamic shape and gain sail area also they have to live with you know this downside of having less energy but they gain you know they gain so much in terms of leverage and stability and potential that even an extra head of windage compared to the rest is a is a small fraction so if you do the numbers uh, the head of a cycler compared to the frontal area is around one percent but the gain of having more sail area closer to the water that's about two percent and it seems very small but this is the order of magnitude that we're playing with so they are losing a little bit on one side, but they are gaining more on the other side. Now, really the question is, is this lower energy going to have an impact on performance? And, and this is what we will have to see. But 20% of trimming less does not feel such a large impact to me. You can look at the videos, for instance, and you can see how much the traveler is moving every second. And you can see some teams, it goes pam, 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 pam. So three times a second. And imagine you have 20% less energy to trim the sails. You know, you have to trim it a little bit slower. Is this going to have an impact? Is the human able to pull so much of performance from the trimming? This is what will be answered ultimately. But I think the, the gut feel is, is that it's a performance gain. The other thing they've done, isn't there, haven't they, is with those pods, they've shifted. So everybody's shifted their helmsman forward, but they've shifted their helm and trim or flight control pods side by side, yes? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we are seeing also in the other teams is that if we go back to the sketch again of the equilibrium, there's the weight of the boat in, in the center and it must be balanced by the lift of the foil. And the further forward the weight is, the more you're loading the main foil, which creates stability compared to the aft foil. So all the teams have been trying to push weight forward. And I think that's where we see this solution of having two crews side by side here. What we can see is that the architecture generally is the same as the other boat. So you have the mainsail, which is end plated. You have the sort of two small cockpit pods. But where they have done something really different is in the way they have managed to pull the mainsail really down close to the water. And you can see it on this picture that they have a much longer sail than the others because they have been able to reduce the depth of the boat. And what that does 
is that it's lowering the center of effort of the sail. So you have to imagine the sails are, are, are the wind pressure is pushing sideways and forward, and the lower the center of effort is by adding sail area down, the more forces you can create to push you forward. And this is really what, what they have done here in the case of this boat. Now, all the AC-75s have a rig that's designed to the same basic specifications, aren't they? But then you can effectively add a step to it to create that extra sail area depth. Is that right? Yes, there's a, there's a point where the mass must be stepped, but it's a virtual point. You're, you're allowed, there's a gray area in the wall where you're allowed to extend the sail and extend the mass down as much as you want. And so they have really used that area of the wall. And so th that has created the um, literal additional sail area that we could see from this angle, yes? Yeah, I think what's interesting is that we are always trying to maximize writing moment on the boat, because the more writing moment you have, the more sail area and the more force can push you forward. But in this class of boat, the displacement is constant. And what gives you the leverage is the foil, which basically is the same for everyone. And so you cannot really play with the weight or the hull shape or the fold shape to increase writing moment. And the way they have done it on this boat is not to play with the weight and the vertical lift of the foil and that distance, but it's to reduce that A distance to be able to generate more side force, more driving force in the sails to push them forward. So while the cyclones are generating the power for the sail trim, the foil adjustments are driven by battery power, aren't they? So that needs to be factored in, presumably, right from the outset. Yes, and I think that's that's why when we think about the impact of recumbent cyclers, it only has an impact on one of the areas of the systems. And a very important area is how the foils are trimmed. And to give an idea, there's a permanent trimming of the cant angle of the foil, which is the rotation up and down and this allows to trim the amount of lift that is generated up or sideways depending on how much lift is created in the sails and that's permanently trimmed and the other aspect are the flaps in the back of the main foil so the slower you go the more angle you put on the flap and the faster you go the the more you reduce this angle and there are other aspects some some teams probably one could think of having trim tabs which are oriented differently on the other side of the foil and so that you can move the point further out or further in if you move one flap up and the other one down and so there's a full aspect of energy and which is linked to how the computers are going to trim the foils in in real time and and the sailors on board as well so presumably they all carry similar amounts of battery capacity and the gains are in how efficient your systems are in terms of how much of that power is lost. Yeah, and I think that's an important aspect also of American magic is in, in the broader concept is that structurally the load paths are very clear, they are very smooth, more traditional, and so there's an aspect where they can also save some structural weight and maybe they can reinvest this into more complex systems. So you, you see there's a, there's a lot of strong um, aspect on this boat. There's been a lot of talk in some of our other conversations about how the boats are designed to handle the Barcelona chop and take off in waves. What mm. does the, the much more slender, reduced bow volume tell you about where they're going in terms of, you know, that difficult transitional stage? I think it's interesting that they um, originally, I thought the bustle of American magic was like a plate all along. But then when you look in details, it's really quite rounded throughout. And so they have also gone to this idea of reducing weighted surface area to take off faster and perhaps slightly less tolerance to the waves and trying to close this gap between the hull and the water, which ultimately impact the aerodynamics of the boat. So it feels slightly conservative perhaps, but putting the levers where it matters, like nobody wants to take off later than another team, everybody wants to take off as fast as possible. Well, we won't know, will we, until they properly line up against one another, yeah. which isn't going to happen until August. There's already been a fair bit of boat sailing near to each other in Barcelona, but they're not allowed to start and they're not allowed to practice race at this stage. But you're quite excited by this one, presumably. 
Yeah, I think it's it's super cool to see the, this concept, and and for sure it's impossible to to know who is going to win. There are so many factors that go into performance, but I think that's a super super interesting boat to see, and, and it's good to see the Americans on the water too. Mm -hmm.